Welcome to the world of Reddit. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, today I learned. Today I learned is a great one. I love that one. Uh, basically, you share things that you've learned that day. Okay. Today I learned Shia LaBeouf came under heavy fire for plagiarizing his dictatorial debut in 2012 when he publicly apologized to the original artist. Dan Close. People discovered that Shia's apology was itself plagiarized verbatim off of Yahoo Answers post from 2010. Okay. If you're going to plagiarize somebody's uh, directorial uh, uh, thing, right? If you're going to plagiarize that, um, and then you apologize by plagiarizing something off of Yahoo Answers, this to me says, like, this screams, like, uh, intentional. He was trying to make a statement, right? Maybe this Dan Klaus wasn't in on it, he, you know. But he, it felt like he was trying to make a statement. Why else would you plagiarize some type of apology from a website that everybody can search while being accused for plagiarism? Shia LaBeau, like, remember when that time he was wearing, like, the bag over his head? He was doing that thing? He's the type of artist that will make statements. And this just feels like a statement, you know? It just feels like a statement. Okay, this is trending right now because two filmmakers robbed Adam Ellis comic strip for their movie and then asked him afterward if he wanted to do press for them. I remember this. Adam Ellis is this great comic. I like to share him on my Instagram, uh, Ellis, and he used to work for BuzzFeed. Uh, he created this awesome comic, he created this comic that was near and dear to him, spoke to what he experienced, uh, so it was very metaphorical. And these guys ripped off a shot for shot of his so this was creating a new movie these creators were quote unquote inspired by this cartoon panel that he did and then shot that movie wow and then they didn't ask him if they could shoot that comic strip they didn't ask him that part they created the movie they edited it they put all their money in it and then uh when they started going to film festivals that's when they reached out to him and they're like hey will you will you promote for us and at this point, Adam was like, what the hell? Like, he basically was was taken back by it. He's like, no, you can't do this. This is my work. You can't do this. You need to take it down. And so then they ghosted him. So they didn't talk to him. So the way that Adam found out about this is it actually was then, it was winning uh, an award at a festival. A uh, short film directed by these guys will never work in Hollywood again. Uh, that was featured exclusively on the Director's Notes website after running in film festivals last year. Keratin is a black and white film that follows a man who enacts a strange uh, magical ritual. When asked, where did the idea for Keratin come from? And did you draw from any particular sources when developed the idea? They said the original concept was inspired by a short online cartoon we saw, which we developed further, drawing on our love for dystopian stories and imagery. Uh, nothing further than that, the creator of the cartoon had to say, uh, the film is fully plagiarized shot for shot remake of my comic. The filmmakers didn't ask my permission to adapt my work. They didn't even notify me uh, that they were doing so until the film had been released and was winning awards at film festivals. That is horrible. So in case you want to do a shot for shot recreation of this Twitch stream, please reach out to me first, first of all. Uh, if you did do a shot for shot of this Twitch stream, I would be amazed. I would be impressed and uh, all power to you. <laughs> like, I'd be like, wow, that was that was really neat. You did a really good job. But in essence, uh, any type of work that an artist creates is essentially very personal to them. So for someone to uh, come in and just to take that artwork and, and to adapt it into their own feels so like, it feels so abusive. It feels like um, so you created a child, then someone like took that child away and then was like, I'm going to raise it. And this is what it became. And you're like, whoa, dude, I wasn't ready for that at all. This is so effed up that they would do that to him. I have had that experience before in Hollywood. And, you know, this thing is like sometimes the amount of times that this gets caught compared to the amount of times that it just happens like is not equal, right? Adam Ellis is very lucky that he has a platform because when these things come up, he can say, hey, look at this, I did this, 
X, Y, Z, right? And there are plenty of people, me personally, and some people that I know that this has happened to, but no platform and nothing ever comes of it, right? If it was, if it was, if this was a, a piece of work that I did, and uh, let's say Andrew Butler and this James Wilson uh, started winning awards and, and all this and all that, it'd be like, oh, wow, Andrew Butler and James Wilson are, are great, and, and nothing would ever happen. These guys are straight up, that's, you're dumb if you take somebody else's work. Like, if you can create, if you can, if you can shoot something this nice, right, you have the, you have the knowledge to do so, but you can't come up with an idea that you believe in so much, like, you have a problem. Like, this isn't the first time these dudes did that, right? They probably have done this before, where they have taken other people's work in some sense of way. Some people might say, like, hey, you can be inspired. Like, if I saw something, I was inspired by it. Yeah, you, you could totally be inspired by some aspects of art, but you can't go straight up taking every piece of it and, and doing all all of it like this is essentially the same piece of art uh from different lenses right they took it and they decided to be greedy is essentially what they did Ooh, he also shared a letter from the producers after the film had been shown okay let's check this out okay dear adam i wanted to get in touch with you regarding short film i have produced and exhibited in festivals to a great reception so far my film is called keratin and it takes some influence from your work on a previous instagram comic strip Adam, we have credited you in our short film as an influencer upon our work. Our film is now playing part of the BAFTA and Oscar qualifying Bristol Encounters and Leeds International Film Festival. We have already performed well in Atlanta, Italy, Brinkton, Georgia, and uh, Louisiana, LA, Los Angeles. Sorry, my fault. Uh, could you please watch film and let us know what you think? It would be quite wonderful if you were interested in working together to promote our film while it plays in festivals and in accordance to our online international release. Wow. That guy basically was like, hey, I did your work, and, and now do the dirty work. Like, promoting is the hardest part. Like, even for me, it's hard for me to be like, hey, I'm going to be on Reddit tonight. You, you want to check it out? Like, I, <laughs> it's hard for me. That's hard for me to, to do that. Like, I, I, cannot, I cannot for the life of me be like, hey, will you just watch me? Like, even just turn me on mute and like, just, I can't do that. Like, to promote is the hardest, okay? So for these guys to be like, hey, I saw that thing you did and um, uh, will you uh, promote it? Like, that is so, that, okay. One time I was, uh, I produced a show and it was a sketch show. And uh, at one point, uh, up leading up to that show, I was doing shows around town. I was a stand-up comic. And at one time, uh, one of the cool kids was like, hey, Chell. And I was like, oh, yeah? He's like, hey, I heard you're running a show. I was like, oh, he's probably going to ask me to produce it or to be on it. He's probably going to ask if he could be on it. Or he's going to ask me if he wants to work on something together. I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm open to both. I'm excited. I, it's a guy I haven't really talked to, but I want to get to know. He's a cool kid to see. And he goes, uh, uh, I heard you're running that show. And I go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, you mind putting me in touch with the person who books that? It's like, whoa, dude, like you're, we haven't even talked about any, we haven't even BS. You're just going straight. You're going straight. <laughs> or like, you basically put like a finger in my mouth. Like, this is not consensual. Like, don't do this. Like, you can't, you can't, if someone has something, you have to be excited for them. It's just, you have to, you, if, if, if my friend was to get nominated for an Oscar because he was in a movie with some writer that he knows, I wouldn't go to him and be like, hey, bud, I uh, heard you got uh, nominated for that Oscar that you wrote by your best friend. Cool, cool. Uh, will you introduce me to that friend so I can get an Oscar too? Like, that's messed up. Like, you have to be excited and you have to show support. That's how you get anywhere. Like, you have to show support. In stand-up, it's just like you go support the show. You show up like five times and then you ask, hey, I've been to your show like five times. Can I get on your show? Like, that's that's the natural order of things. Because in stand-up especially, it is the producer's job to put butts in seats, right? And a producer, especially one who's also a comic, is going to more kindly favor someone who's actually putting a butt in that seat. Someone who's sitting there, watching the show, uh, buying food. Because that makes the producer look good, which will then in turn help you win favor with him so that you can get on shows. 
Like, that's how you got on shows. You show up, you support, and then after a while you go ask. You know, they don't mind that they get asked. But don't ask, like, right before the show starts, hey, can I get five minutes of time? No, it doesn't work like that. You go, you sit down, you watch the show, you introduce yourself afterward. If you feel inclined, ask then. If not, come back the next week. Then ask. Like, you you can't expect to just show up and be like, hey, look at me. I, I've got five minutes. Look at me. Like, this is so messed up. This is so messed up. I hate those guys. <laughs> They're going on my hate list. I hate those guys. If you steal, I hate you. Uh, I, I'm going to have a hate list. All right. right, let's. right. We're starting a hate list right now. I'm getting out my notepad, and we're starting out uh, a band list. You are no longer uh, able to enjoy my content because I don't know what you'll do. It's, it's not a hate list. I can't hate someone. That's such a strong word. It's going to be a ban list. All right, here we go. It's a ban list, and this is the first people that have ever made the ban list. That's I'm excited. I've never had a ban list before, but they're going on it. All right, banned. Andrew Butler and James Wilson, you are banned uh, from enjoying my art, and I hope other people ban you too. Be gone. <laughs> All right. Feel free to start your own ban list. You know, sometimes sometimes you're going to want to ban somebody and you're like, ah, I wish I had a piece of paper. Uh, start it on your notes on your phone. Just be like a comic when you write new ideas or a writer, right? Just go ahead. Start your own little ban list. Wherever you put it, just be banned. You know, someone treats you rude at McDonald's, banned. Someone, you know, flicks you off, banned. Banned their license plate. It's just good to just to put a big list out there of people that need to be banned. It should be banned. It should be banned. Oh my God. I got to save my ban list now. If you will excuse me, I'm saving my ban list. And it is going on my desktop because I do not know when I will use this again. Hopefully not soon. We now have a ban list. Congratulations. We are official on Twitter, guys. This is official. <laughs> Just so you guys know, here it is. It's uh, my ban list. Okay, okay. I'm going to put it back. You guys are banned. You're banned from enjoying my art. Okay.